It's been a while since I rode on the Eurostar, so I figured I'd come and um, have a ride on it today to see how it's changed post-COVID and what it's like to ride on Eurostar since obviously we had all the restrictions since the whole kind of COVID situation. So here at Paris is Gare du Nord, home of Eurostar of course, and we're going to head across to London St Pancras on our way home. Big thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. They're running quite a reduced timetable on the Paris to London routes at the moment, just three trains a day. Um, and they're only changing it and letting you know about a week in advance. So make sure you keep an eye on that if you do book with Eurostar at the moment. Um, don't forget all tickets are changeable at the minute as well. So you can just move them around as you need. But um, I've just managed to change it back an hour from my original departure at nine o'clock to 10 o'clock. I do really enjoy traveling through Gare du Nord. It's always been a place that really captures the romanticism of rail travel for me, where you could just hop on a train and end up anywhere in Europe. Now, of course, one thing you do have to do at the moment before you travel to the UK is to fill in your border force form, which is something that, of course, I've forgotten to do. So I'm going to have to do it now before I head through. There's actually a sign here reminding you uh, before you go through passport control. Let's do it now. The passenger locator form for the UK is a little bit long-winded, but when you've completed it a few times it gets a lot quicker and it took about five minutes for me to complete it today. Form completed, it was time to head through to departures and find out just how different the Eurostar experience is these days. British, yes, mercy, thank you. Boarding the Eurostar at Paris is pretty efficient. You clear both the French and British border at the same time, going through the French one first. After the French side, you show your completed passenger locator form and proceed to the British border. Uh, yep. Perfect. Give it to the office in London. Yep, perfect. Thank you. Finally, there's a really straightforward security point where you drop your bag on the belt and just collect it the other side. No need for taking out liquids or electronics. The whole process takes just a few minutes and you're soon in the departure lounge ready to board the train. It's all fairly straightforward then here at Paris, just pretty similar to how it was before you go through the um, French border patrol and you go through the British passport control and through security they did check my form um, which they do tend to do on arrival in the UK anyway but they check my form at this end and I've got a little bit of paper that I have to give to Border Force when I arrive in London to say that they've seen my form my entry to the UK form other than that really exactly the same as before just a lot quieter than normal The departure lounge was fairly quiet with just a few departures today and sadly the coffee shop was closed meaning the vending machine was getting a little bit of hammer today. Sadly my camera decided to pack up just as we started boarding but it was fairly straightforward and we were soon on board and pulling out of the station heading for London. I was travelling in standard Premier today which gives you a meal on board but you don't get the lounge access that you get in business Premier which is a lot pricier so for me it's not worth the upgrade. As we pulled out of Paris, it was time for breakfast. It's a simple affair, but no different really to pre-COVID service. Nice French breakfast to start the day, yes. You see, I'm as big a fan of planes as anyone, but for me, you can't really beat the Eurostar for the whole convenience factor. For me especially, living just off the East Midlands line, it's a direct train from St Pancras. So for me, coming from Paris is essentially just an extension of London thanks to the Eurostar, it's great. 
no hassle at all, you can get a nice breakfast on board as well. And within a couple of hours of leaving Paris, I'm in London and connecting on my homeward train. So I was just talking to the hostess and the train's actually really quiet today. Um, but she said that lately the train's been really busy between London and Paris and it's been like sold out every single day for the last few days. So that's a really good sign I think that things are picking up a little bit on the Euro stop. I always find it a surprisingly long trip from Paris to the coast compared to the English side. We wound our way through the French countryside passing loads of beautiful views and some lovely quaint farms along the way. Before long we slowed down and passed through the Eurostar terminal at Calais, meaning that we'd soon be entering the Channel Tunnel. So there we go, inside the Channel Tunnel, under the English Channel, leaving France behind. Next stop, England. I always find it incredible how you can get a 4G phone signal 40 metres underneath the sea. Pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> That 4G signal wasn't really needed though because with just 20 minutes inside the channel tunnel it seemed like a perfect opportunity for me to try out Blinkist. By the time we entered England on the other side I'd had time to listen to all of the highlights from one of over 3,000 non-fiction books condensed into less than 15 minutes. Blinkist takes a non-fiction book, condenses it into a 15 minute chunk and lets you read or listen to it just like a podcast. They've got over 14 million active users and you don't even need data to use it, you can access all the titles while you're offline. Ideal for me when I'm flying or just going through a regular non-4G tunnel. I really enjoyed The Art of Travel by Alain Dubotton. It teaches you how to stop seeing travel as a chore and enjoy it for what it is, allowing you to appreciate once again the beauty and wonder of travel. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash Noel Phillips will get unlimited access for a week to try it out and you'll also get 25% off when you get a full membership. The trial is completely free and you can cancel at any time during that period. So there we go, 20 minutes after leaving France, we're back in England. <laughs> that never stops being cool. Welcome home. One thing I love about the Eurostar is how you can leave behind the countryside of northern France, passing little Citroen vans and farms, and just 20 minutes later emerge in England and be passing places that look and feel just like home small housing estates, the M25, they might not seem like much to many people but after a long trip away I think there's really nothing better than the familiarity of home appearing so quickly and so suddenly just outside the window. If you are enjoying this video on the Eurostar don't forget to check out my previous video taking the Caledonian sleeper from London all the way up to Glasgow in Scotland. The link's on the screen now. We pulled into St Pancras and joined the long line to enter the UK. There's no passport checks or anything at this end as we've done them all in Paris and within a few minutes you're in the main concourse at St Pancras with the UK at your fingertips. My ride back to England today cost me £120. So there we go then, back here at London St Pancras, five minutes after getting off that train, ready to get on my train back home north. Um, really enjoyed that and to be fair things seemed pretty normal on the Eurostar um, during their obviously challenging times they've got at the moment. My little border force thing they gave me in Paris, well, they never asked for that here, just walked straight through. Um, although they did have lots of staff on, I guess, so I, I'm imagining that they pull people aside randomly to get those off them. But other than that, quite a nice little ride over on the Eurostar back to London. And I'm heading home now to go and get some rest. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think to it down in the comments below. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.